However hard anyone has tried to make the Scotland debate all about this, national pride, heritage, a sense of identity, in the end, it's always come back down to this, money. Not just how much of it an independent Scotland would have, but also what currency it would be denominated in. Back in the early 18th century, just before the Union and just before the time of Adam Smith, the world's first great economist and a native of Edinburgh, Scotland did have its own independent currency, the Scots pound. This is one of them here. Now, in the event of independence, there would be three options, broadly speaking, for Scotland. First, it could go back to a new independent currency, the Scots pound mark II. Secondly, it could try to join the euro, but a lot of people are very concerned about that, given what's happened recently. Finally, it could have the British pound, either officially or unofficially. What currency are they going to have if they don't have a currency union? Just answer the question. The reason neither of these two can give a definitive answer is because there isn't one. It'll be subject to months of painful negotiation if there is a yes vote. An independent Scotland could feasibly end up trying out all three. Some groups think Scotland would actually be better off without an official currency union. That would mean, ultimately, that the Bank of England would not be stepping in as a lender of last resort in the event that a Scottish bank became illiquid, for example, if it was experiencing a bank run. The reason we think that this would be a good idea is because it would require Scottish banks to act in a much more prudent and stable way. And we've looked at Scottish history where they had a system like this for more than 100 years with a lot of success. Scottish exporters, such as this shortbread manufacturer, also worry about whether the country could raise enough money to pay its bills. The Yes campaign solution is to bake slightly more optimistic forecasts into its numbers. So while the rest of the UK is expected to see productivity grow by 2.2% a year, the Yes campaign thinks an independent Scotland could achieve 2.5%, and more growth would mean more tax revenues and a smaller deficit. People do want to see more detail on, on, on what might drive the additional uh, productivity that Scotland uh, might, might need to have in order to become a small, successful European country, because clearly there would be some transition costs that would have to be uh, met in the first instance, so you would need to, to be producing more to offset these. The problem is, so much of this hinges on how much you're going to get out of the North Sea. Oil revenues, and they are very volatile indeed. To give an example, the Treasury is expecting to make 2.9 billion pounds in 2016-17. Whereas the Yes campaign expects double that, 6.9 billion pounds in the same year. The reality is no one really knows what the answer is going to be. You wouldn't really guess that listening to either side. And yet this is central to how much money Scotland would have as an independent nation, whether it's going to have austerity or lots of money to spend in the future. In the end, much depends on who comes out to vote. Can I ask for straw poll circumstances? Have, you, have each of you decided yet? I have. Yeah. Yeah, and where, where, where do each of you stand? I'm four. You're four. I'm four. You're four. I'm against. You're against. against. Two and two. In reality, though, the over 60s are the most sceptical age group. They're most worried about their finances and Scotland's ability to support an ageing population. One solution might be to open the floodgates for immigration. But the image of thousands of people flocking into an independent Scotland isn't one either side had banked on. Ed Conway, Sky News in Edinburgh.